or to the cloud. Yeah. 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 You see that? What is that? Is this number four? No. See, it is. It is. Oh. But I want to stop you. Yeah. Because it's a new beginning. What do you mean? I mean? We're going weekly. And not just are we going weekly. So, yes, it's number four. But we're going weekly and we're I'll starting let... with the pilot. Okay, you do all that. that that's I'm doing fucking... it. We're recording right now. Oh, right now? Right now. Wow. I'm on camera? <laughs> you're on camera. How's my hair? Um, you're, again, you're not in the center of the screen, but it's okay. I know you're always a little, uh, it's just you. Kim Coates is just off there. center. That's wow. all. You're in now. You're in. Yeah. You're staring. I'm looking did, down your eyes. Did you see, Theo, I cut my hair for you and your, sure. your podcast. Do you know why? Because yeah. I think we're going to talk about the pilot which you have short hair and i had short hair i had no beard i didn't even know who i was so this is in deference and, and celebration of that no it's kimberly not. frederick Coates. this Correct. is the beginning wow. of the beginning of it all right here right now <laughs> here we are but but here's the crazy thing because you and i were just speaking of this while you were drinking your water i'm drinking my apple cider vinegar with a little iodine in it cheers um iodine's good if you're a vegan you want to get extra just cleans you right out cleans you right out right out I just said could be could be wow. pooping on the chair at one point gotta go <laughs> gotta go right back coatsy <laughs> but here's you 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 brought this up and i and i really do think before we get into the pilot yeah the one that the world has seen yeah we do have to know that there was a pilot before the pilot the pre-pilot, which had no Kim Coates, which had no Tig, which had no Clay Ron. No. Different Clay. Yeah. Alvarez, different character. Yeah. Um, his name what was, was... What was his name? Let me give me a second now, because I auditioned for the role. He Hawk? Was, uh, Hawk. Look at you. I you must have read the too. Hawk Sides. I, you know? We all did. Charlie okay. did. We all okay. did. It was Everybody did. So, Hawk. Wow. <laughs> there are still remnants as we kick off this weekly Reaper review when we're talking about the pilot, the beginning of it all. Um, there are still remnants in this show of that old pilot. Very few, but there are some scenes that we kept. Had to which we'll get to, they're kind of little Easter eggs as we're going into this, but we did, we shot this pilot and I'll, ne I'll never forget. And maybe I just wanted, I'm gonna take you down. You might not even know this. I'll take you down a memory Tell lane me. for a second. I had done like you, well, no, you hadn't really, you'd never done TV before this. You'd only done I movies. I did, I did guest stars. There's a lot of guest stars like you. I just didn't do a regular on a TV show. I never went up for regulars on a TV show, but I, I did, I did Prison Break. I did CSI Miami. But had you ever done a uh, pilot? Never did a pilot. Okay. So I had, and when you do pilot, and none of them had ever been, ever been picked up. So, you know, you shoot a pilot, you know the deal, right? You shoot a pilot episode, one episode, and then months later, they tell you if it's going to go to series. Yeah, yeah. But sometimes there's changes. So we had shot this pilot, and we're on pins and needles. We thought we did this cool show, and, uh, and they called us up, and they said, hey, good news, bad news. Pilot's been picked up. Wow. But they're recasting two of the actors. And I went, oh, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> That's the bad news. My first thought was, I'm gone. I have to be, I have to be the one gone. And it was yeah. so funny because we were all pretty close. And each, <laughs> each one of us who was speaking was like, oh, it's got to be me. No, it's got to be me. No, it's got to be me. And, <laughs> And even, even Charlie was like, I'm pretty sure they're going to recast me, the lead. It's never going to be, uh, you know, the actor who was playing Clay was Scott Glenn, who I had done a movie with before and who I love. And we're like, there's no way it's going to be Scott. And then Alva, uh, Hawk was his right-hand man. And Emilio and I, no, no way it's going to be, he's with him all the time. So I was convinced it was me because I didn't have much to do. And I was a totally different character in the original pilot. And, uh, and then, you know, next thing you know, cut to, we're redoing it. I think we shot, what, 16 days on the new pilot? Because you were there. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. you came in 
and Clay came in. And what they did is, for anybody who wants to know a history of Sons of Anarchy, uh, Hawk, who was basically Tig, if you can use your imagination here, that was Clay's right hand. It was called Hawk. It was played by Emilio, who plays Alvarez. Confusing, I know. And no, then he very clear. That was very clear, Theo. Doesn't play Hawk anymore, but they make him Alvarez. And then Ron Perlman replaces Clay. And then here comes Kim Coates in all his grandeur, loveliness, glory. and glory coming into set to play a character called Tig. And we go and we reshoot 16 days of this original pilot, 2008, 2009. I don't know what year it is anymore. Eight. 2008. We know the show's a go. We just have to fix all these things that we're going to do. I now, they come up to me. I get this message. They're going to put, I'm going to get a mohawk. I didn't have a mohawk in the original pilot. I had no tattoos in the original pilot. The ones that I had on my arms were totally different. I had a different character name. Everything was different. So did they use any of your old scenes then from that original pilot in the new one? Did they cut them out? Did you reshoot them? Yes. Remember you said you must have reshot them. I reshot mine. Because if you think about Clay being replaced, yeah. we replaced Scott Glenn with Ron Perlman and then Tig to replace Hawk by, by the new character Tig. Yeah. There was a lot of scenes that we had to reshoot. That's why it took 16 days. That's why John Langraff put all that money and Kurt Sutter into reshooting this pilot because they knew. And when I rewatched the pilot again last night, Theo, and you and I have seen the pilot before. That's one of the shows I have seen. It was, it's just so dynamic. It's just oh. so crazy. Oh. And, and to think that all those people that make decisions saw this pilot and went, something's not quite right, but it's so good, we need to fix it now. Right? And that's what they did. I think, I think and I got to guess, uh, if I was an exec, I would be looking at something and go, they have something here. They have something really good. We want that. There just needs to be a few things that maybe aren't working in their eyes. And you hope that you're not, you know, potentially one of those ones on the chopping block. I mean, there's very famous stories of films that have even been shot for months and they, you know, replace certain actors and the films go on to become these, you know, giant things. I think the biggest one is uh, the Back to the Future one with Michael J. Fox was uh, Eric Stoltz was playing yeah, that yeah. character. And then, you know, they replace him with Michael J. Fox and obviously the world changes. I think with this, again, even when I, for me, as someone who was part of both, even when we reshot the new one, I still was under the impression of we're going to have to do a lot of work for this show to be big because I, I thought we were such a neat show. Like it was like such a, a, a thing that if people came now, like you, I didn't remember the pilot. I don't really remember my, many things in my life, but after watching that last night, cause that's when I watched it. Me too. I, I get it. I get it. I get, I get it. it. Because I get that was uh, that was unbelievable, and and I, I and I have to say that for for before we get into it, if I may, I have to tell the, the fans out there if you don't know, we all had to audition, everybody. Maybe not yeah. Katie because she was you know making love to the to the creator, and and she's just so she unbelievable in the show. So maybe she didn't have to audition. I don't know, but. Uh, Everyone else had to audition. And for me, when I went in six weeks before we reshot the pilot, I read for Clay, I read for Bobby, and I read for Hawk, right? And uh, it didn't go my way, and I was too young for Clay, and, and Booney was so unbelievable You're with Bobby. You're still too young for Clay. I'm still too young for Clay. I, I look so good these like days. I don't, I don't know what's happening. It's anyway, like, no, it's amazing. Calvin Klein, man. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> I might have Calvin Klein on right now, actually. Let me look. Please don't. Yep. I do. <laughs> anyway, anyway, um, so to, to, to cut to, I didn't get it. Wish them well. Oh, wait, so uh, you read for the original pilot? Yeah. Oh. Oh, yeah, yeah, this is fascinating. So I didn't get it, and that's fine. Yeah. So I moved on. I'm on the golf course six weeks later, and I get off the golf course, and you know this about me. I don't answer my phone when I'm playing golf. And uh, I had 18 messages, 18, all from my agents, my managers, and my wife. Call me, call me, call me. It's now like three o'clock in the afternoon. And I, I got all these messages. I called and they went, well, you probably lost it now, but you were first on the list uh, from Kurt Sutter and John Linson to 
to play a guy, a new guy on, they're reshooting the pilot. I'm like, what? what, what? And they, they wanted to see you. Let me call. So they called and Sutter said, yeah, they can come in. I still want to see him. So they said, go there now. And I said, no, I'm not going there now. I'm going to take off my golf duds, put on my jeans and my boots and I'll go there when I get there. So I got there around five o'clock, quarter to five. And I got to tell you, Theo, you were there when they first shot the pilot five weeks earlier. I assume we were in the same studio, were we? Same studio, yeah. Yeah. Everything was the same. It was a beehive of activity. It was a crazy, crazy beehive. People didn't even know I was there. They, they recognized me a little bit, but they just sit in the corner. We'll get to you in a sec. Just crazy, crazy, crazy. And I finally realized that they were reshooting the pilot starting tomorrow, the next day. I knew nothing else. Sutter, finally, go, here he is. Assistant came to get me. I walked in, long, long freaking hallway, long office. And there's Kurt, gets up, long hair, tats, I remember him. How you doing? How you doing, Kimmy? How you? I go, I'm good. What's, what's going on? And he goes, we, we want you to play a guy called Tig. And I go, and so he explained the whole reshoot and they had to recast Clay with Ron Perlman, who I knew and I loved. And I didn't know Scott Glenn did the original. I didn't, didn't know any of that. When's this going to, when's it going to go? He goes, tomorrow. And I go, well, and I had short hair. I had no beard. I, I was a skinny little boy. I just whatever. And, and I, I wasn't really feeling Tig, really, but he goes, look, I said, you have to show me something to read. And he, he gave me, he said, I, I don't have much right now, but I can give you this scene. And I read a scene that was so graphically violent and psychotic and, and I know off the, it is. you know the one it was. Yeah. And, and so I said, you know what, Kurt, this isn't really for me. I got to, I got to be careful with my bad boys. I don't know. He goes, no, hang on, hang on. Yeah. Tig's going to be psychotic and crazy, but he's loyal. He's like a loyal dog to the club. He's going to end up being a, one of the moral compasses of the club. He's going to be funny. He's going to cry. Yeah, he's going to kill a lot of people. But come along for this ride. And I, I said, I, I, anyway, so I left. And do you know, Theo, I signed that contract at 10 o'clock that night. I was on set at 4.45 in the morning. Oh, and before I, one more thing. Before I left the room, with Curtis goes, you ride, right? I go, I do. Can you imagine lying about that and starting the next yeah, day? Well, and not... well speaking. Anyway, I, I'm done. So I, I started the next day and we'll get into that as we shoot. There's a, that's my story. And to meet you and everybody was fucking nuts. Go ahead. So as I'm leaving one of my 75 auditions that I did not get <laughs> for this show, I read for every character. You read for, you read for Tara. You read started for with Jax, Started with Jax, went down the line, read for every single character possible, didn't get anything. And then when uh, I got that call that he, you know, this thing that I've told this story a hundred times, but you know, which is like, I don't know what you're going to do in it, but I'd love for you to take the ride with me. You might have one line, you might have a hundred, you might be in one episode, you might be in a hundred, we just don't know. And then same thing. Um, do you ride? I said, yeah, I have a license. I have a motorcycle license. True fact. I did have a motorcycle license. Fact is, sure I did not ride. I did not ride. <laughs> now, what happened was I used to ride dirt bikes when I was a kid. And when I got to LA and I had absolutely no money, I couldn't afford a car. We were all split in a car. Me, Mario, Mona, everybody. We were all like Mona, riding in one Mona. car. And I thought a great idea would be I had a few bucks from waiting tables. Let me go get my motorcycle license. I took that like three day course yeah. in like 2000. Par in the parking lot. Oh, yeah. Yeah, up in the valley. I took the motorcycle course. So I had my motorcycle license. But I hadn't touched the bike in eight years from one of those Honda Rebels you used to get the thing. Nightmare. So when You're he nightmare. said it, do you ride? I said, yeah, I have my motorcycle license. And then when we first got to like training, they, they gave me this big fat boy. And they're like, all right, you know, take it around. I said, this thing weighs 600 pounds. <laughs> um, but, but, you know, again, you talk about just like how you, you know, what I love what you said, which is so true is trial by fire, where it was like, Hey, by the way, sign the contract. You're on set. Let's go. You're TIG. And it was me. It was like, hey, by the way, you're doing the show? Because I think it was like just me, Jax, and, and I think they were still casting when Charlie and I were doing some motorcycle training. Yeah, yeah. And no one else was cast. And I, I, it was totally like, I'm going to go in and fake it till you make it. I was like, okay, until I go and crash into something, I am going to. So they had a dirt bike. They had the fat boy. But the point is, it was this whole show, and I think really all seven years, and it all starts with this, they really felt like trial by fire. <laughs> where it was like, 
that damn Nobody kickstand. Nobody knew what, you were just holding on for dear life for all eight years of the whole I, thing. I, I, I wasn't. You were. I, I, was. I was not. Yeah. You, but it, but you, you came in, and, I, and again, I always tell this story, but when you came in, I flipped out because, you know, I'm a giant Waterworld fan, like a giant Waterworld fan. And I, you know, Mona always does the not for sale, not for sale. But when <laughs> I, when I, I think I, because this is pre-smartphone, but I think I like did my flip phone or whatever it was. Oh, no, it's no, this is post-smartphone. It's 08. I called up Mona right away. I was like, you have no oh, idea who yeah, just joined yeah. the cast of this. And yeah. uh, yeah. I was pretty excited. So speaking of that, here we are. Uh, this is the first. Let's get into it. Go. Whoa. Whoa. Let's go. Pilot. Let's pilot. talk about the pilot. We kind of are. We so, are. So my first day on that show was with Boone playing Bobby and Clay and Leroy we were out in the park, downtown LA, which was supposed to be Oakland. There we are, filming away. I had no lines. I got to set Theo, Kelly Jones. Mm -hmm. Gorgeous, talented, costume. costume designer. Looks at me and goes, hi, I'm Kelly. Hi, I'm Kim. You're playing Tig, wow. Here we she just had everything, jeans, but we just threw it on. We literally threw it on. So Tig was like a, had no idea what I was doing. I'm talking about how many rings should I wear with John Linson. Kurt Sutter says, say whatever you want. We know that wasn't true, but he said, say whatever you want. <laughs> Make it all up. It's all good. Um, but I, I just re remember going, I'm now doing a TV show. And slowly but surely, I met you and Charlie. Uh, we had that night scene, that incredible night scene. That's one of yeah. the first times I ran into you. And I thought, what a face. Yeah. And, this, and this guy's full of beans and he's from New York. And yeah. I love New York so much. And I... I was really an outsider, right? Because you guys had already shot the pilot and Tommy, I'd worked with Tommy True. before. So Tommy and I were already pals, but he was already suspicious of how the, how the fuck I got the, the gig. And yeah. here you are, Coates, and you're a great actor, but I don't, now we're, you know, we're inseparable, Tommy and I. But honest to God, you guys must have felt so bizarre reshooting scenes that you'd already shot with Scott, right? I mean. Yeah, I think that what it was was, there was, it was kind of a counter of emotions, meaning that we were so happy that the show got picked up. Yeah. We were so yeah. happy to be there. But also, it wasn't, it was different. Um, so what that means is like, I knew Scott, because I had, I had done this film with him, uh, Code Breakers or something in Toronto. Yeah. Um, years before in like 2004. And I had known him, but, but, you know, Scott was really on his own, even when we did the original pilot, but Alvarez uh -huh, was kind of uh -huh. part of our thing, you know, yeah. uh, as Hawk. And when yeah. you guys came on, it was just, again, you know how it is. Like, you know, if you're with, if you shoot a movie for two, three weeks and then other people come, it's always slightly strange, right? You kind of yeah. like, yeah. how do I get into this kind of mode? And for us, what was a little odd, and I can only, I can't imagine for Jax, is we were reshooting things that we had currently shot so that you very rarely get a chance to do that as an actor where you get to reshoot. Never. Something. You always, you always had new scenes to add to the movie or to add its new stuff. Got to look like that character. We're bringing right. it back. We want to spend money, but not reshoot because yeah. of replacing characters. And, and like again, that. you really hit on something before. What people need to understand is we were going 600 miles an hour. We would like literally that like it was on and go, 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 go. And everybody again was just holding on in the beginning. And I think that on the reshoot scene, you guys was this breath of fresh air of like, oh, wow, we're, we're going to wow. go. We're, wow. we're, doing, we're doing 13 of these, we hope. Wow. Um, but okay, let's everybody, let's see how this goes. And like you said, I mean, you know, listen, people don't understand this. I've done a few of these now. You have too. When you, a bunch of guys are around each other, things are competitive, things are weird, things are whatever. And then, you know, you can go two ways. You can either fold like origami or you can become like family. And, and you know, thank God we went the other way and became like family. But that's, that's the truth. So when we got there, you said, I know that scene with Leroy, but let me go to my notes because the one thing that I put that I really loved was it starts off with those crows, right? And it starts off with the two crows, which the sh well, I don't want to talk about season seven last episode. 
No, but we have to. My first note is starts with crows and it ended with crows. Starts with crows and ends with crows. Look at that. Look Just at like that. that. Just I like mean, that. the brilliance of that fucking sutter. And it's like, eating like a dove or something on the on the Something floor. on the, like something. roadkill. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's, that. That, that's how it all started. Just like that. And then I wrote, you know, the James Dean opening shot. He's yeah. smoking. First of all, I can't, I, I, I don't, I haven't smoked a cigarette in 11 years, but when I did smoke cigarettes, I couldn't smoke while I was riding a motorcycle. The head of the cigarette would keep falling. I don't know. I don't know how he did it. I don't, <laughs> I don't that. know. That was not really Charlie. There must've been a green screen. I don't know how they did it. No, how Charlie looked really cigarette good. In his mouth? He had the Marlboro just hanging right out. It didn't fall. It was amazing. But here he is, the James Dean opening shot, you know, coming in, the two crows, the white dove, like, boom, there he is. And he's riding through town. And it's just, and, and again, another thing we always joked around about later on is, you know, didn't have his sunglasses on, which we know you can't ride with no glasses on because your eyes just get wrecked. But again, for the camera, this is the beginning. And then, uh, and then what I thought was really <laughs> interesting, and, uh, and then I'll let you go, is right after that big, amazing opening, you know, Jack's coming in. Alvarez comes in pretty hot and heavy right away. Yeah. Comes right out of that car and like, you're like, oh, that's the bad guy right there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I did not remember that. I, but again, we all know, I don't remember anything. So, <laughs> I mean, what'd you think up until that I, point? I, 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 just, I just think it's amazing. I think that you have Charlie. Here's the beginning of the show that no one knows if it's even going to go a second show or a third show, but we're going to try. And here we go. We're filming it. People get to see the pilot. We, we filmed it. Here we go. So we're going to make, make the show. Charlie is just, uh, he's Jax, man. He's number one on the call Jax. sheet. And we're going to show the world that this is the kid that we're going to look through for maybe seven seasons. We'll see how that goes. But we're not going to stay on him too long because we're going to cut to some, some stuff. And here, here are the Mayans. No fucking around. They, it's dark. So you go from late to dark. Just boom. Let's just get into some nighttime stuff right away. And not a lot of talks going on. We don't know what's happening. Sutter's like playing it out, but there's guns involved. There's, there's some stealing going on. Okay, there's that. Well, then, if you remember, you cut back, and here's Charlie at that drugstore. Oh, that God, little store with, with our gal. Yeah. And it's, it's innocence. It's beautiful. She's pulling her top down a yeah. little bit. Charlie's he's the playing. rock star. He's the rock star he's, of charming. He's, he's the rock star of charming. Yep. And I wrote it down. He goes, um, Charlie, he comes in and he goes, it goes like this. It goes, here's, here's this show. And he puts down on the counter, condoms, smokes, rolling papers. It's like, welcome to the biker world. Yeah. Right away. Boom. And it, there's an innocence with the baby book, right? With the little baby book. I, I, I just thought that was a great, uh, a great two worlds coming together of the girl noticing that he was looking at the baby book. She puts it in the bag. And yet and Charlie- he was having a baby. This, so this a was baby. something I messed up in my head. I didn't remember that Abel was being born in the first episode. Neither I did I. He was already there. No, he was here. We're about to see it. Okay, and, I didn't know that. So that was a cool surprise. I was like, oh, wow, so he doesn't cool. even have his kid. No. So, okay, so then we go, by the way, let's just address, if anybody wants to watch this episode and look in, the clay double is rocking in this, in this episode, right? Where do we get him? Where do we get him? Where did we lose him? When did we lose him? I mean, <laughs> I checked those riding scenes and I put my... I put the binoculars on and I saw, yeah. it. I'm like, that yeah. is not okay. No. The clay doubles no. in there. He's riding. And yeah. um, so what was also funny is for the riding, even the experienced riders like you and Boone and whatever, you can also tell that everybody's getting their sea legs with the riding in the first couple of scenes. Like I saw people, cause if you well, look at point. season seven, we're whipping. No, no, good point. In fact, if you really look at this episode, there's not a lot of bike riding. And you know what, you know what the riding is? It was those reshoots that we did with sometimes Ron, sometimes a Ron double, Charlie, me, Boone, and then whoever they could find, whoever right? Yeah. And we would zip around corners and zip around hills and, and, they, would, and they, would, they would put those shots in. They filtered them in in the pilot, which I forgot about. 
But when we were doing reshoots, remember that, Theo? We would do those scenes. Sometimes Johnny Lewis was in there. Yep. Sometimes you were in there. Yep. But we, we would filter in five of us, and we used that throughout. But that was it because the writing stuff was still, Charlie was still getting his legs. You guys were a lot. Oh, Ryan yeah. certainly was. Oh. Uh, Tommy was a nightmare early. Oh, I mean, yeah. how many times did I shop, stop a shot and go, stop, stop. Tommy, why are you dragging your legs? Yeah. Because my boots are slippery. Well, do that before we get on a bike. Yeah. yeah. You know? No, um, and at any moment, at any moment, it, it was, you know, it was high, high wire act. Whenever I would look through a script for at least the first two seasons and I would see a riding scene, I'd go, uh oh. Because <laughs> <laughs> only because it, no matter how much we were riding, when you're riding four inches away on tires and there's people who are way more experienced, it's, it's live, it's happening. And, um, it's happening. and what, you know, and we were going 45, 55, 65, 70, you know, on, on with depending on the camera trucks in front. So in that first episode, I noticed that uh, a good amount, just that sea legs of riding. Um, I forgot, again, I said this, I forgot that, Dre, uh, what's Dre's character's name again? Wendy. I Wendy. forgot she was pregnant. And I totally forgot how powerful and disgusting that scene was with the ice cream in that shitty ass Jack's house and her putting the cigarette out and grabbing the meth and the crank and doing that whole thing. And I'm <sighs> like, this is so visceral and real. And, and um, I forgot it all. And I just, I guess now looking back on it, I was like, that is probably so risky. Like she's fully pregnant. She's like, you know, the baby was born 10 weeks early. So she's seven and a half months or whatever. Pregnant. This is what, this is what Sutter did with seven that. Seven months, whatever. That, that, that's right. And, and those scenes we didn't have to reshoot obviously because they had no clay or, and that's how powerful that first pilot really was. Because when I watch it, Kurt Sutter, I feel uh, those level of writers that do this with showrunners and then with their executives like John Langraff, they go, this is the world. We're going to make it or break it on this. And I'm going to tell you why it works, Theo, because that baby survived. The baby didn't die. The baby survived. So Sutter, which is I said, I forgot all that too. The cigarette and the ice cream, the oh. stuff you just mentioned. That, and, and, you know, Drea, fresh off the Sopranos, brilliant, brilliant actress. And she came along for this ride. She didn't know how big, how small, but she loved the writing. Yeah. And we loved the writing. We didn't know what every week was going to come, but we loved the writing. And that world, I mean, and I have to stop doing this if we are lucky enough to talk about this show weekly like we're doing now. And, yeah. I have to stop saying how much there that Kurt Sutter crammed into 52 minutes. I, I don't, I, I can't, I can't even um, like when we'll go back a bit where like when I forgot how Jax and Clay were kind of at odds I, from the get go. I have that written. That's, that's, that I, written I, let me, I have it written. I said, um, it, mine's a little further down, but I, it, terrific way to set the stage like right away they were at odds over um how to run the fa- club right the they, guns the guns the, the, like yeah like, charlie wanted what what do we do we don't yeah and then and then ron goes we are at church we're all at church great scene for all you boys and we're all at church and charlie goes i don't think so and 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 clay goes shut the fuck up this is what we're we not, do this is what we do we'll talk about that right away in the 15th minute of the episode so there's that and, and I, I remember when we walk away, it was one of my, my first scenes as Tig, where I talked, even though the camera wasn't on me, we, yeah. add, we, we did ADR of the lines later. So the camera, my, I, I'm gonna come to that in a minute. My very first speaking moment as Tig is kind of funny, what I say. But that moment, that day, you have, we're all walking away from this burnt out warehouse, shit's hit the fan bad, it's early in the episode, and, and Clay goes, um, you know, he puts his gun, gives it to Jax, he goes, put, put two bullets, and just put two in the head, to himself. Yep. And, 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 and Jax goes, it ain't easy being king. And Clay goes, get used to it. 
So these little feathers of foreshadowing by Sutter so early, I, I had forgotten. But remember, and, but remember, and we'll, and we'll talk about it as we go, it, it kind of seesaws. They come together, they go away, it comes together, right? There's seesaws that happen. Yes. But yes. make no mistake, when he found that journal, which I can't wait to get into, but when he found that journal, he starts questioning everything. And I would believe, I think that in my mind, if I'm creating backstory, the young guys, the Jaxes, the Opies, you know, maybe even the Juices are sitting there going like, man, when Clay can't ride anymore, we're going to do this, 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 and this, you know, we're going to make it this, 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 and this. And, and, but I don't think he ever thought like getting out of what makes the money because maybe he just thought that's the way it's done. Right. And you and I have been privy to this in other things in life where you go, this 100%. is the way it's done. And then someone shows you another way and you go, oh, there's another way to do this. And I think when he read the journal, he was like, well, what if we don't rebuild? What if we don't do this? What if we don't, you know, because of these guns. And I just think that right there, that's immediately, wait, I'm the boss. You're not the boss. Yeah. I don't, you don't tell. And why is he yeah. acting like this? And yeah. okay. So not to get off course in case any not that i think anybody's following in line here with this no, um they're not but, the but they love thing, you so the one thing i wanted to say is that and and this is hard to say for a show you're on it's truly perfect casting and and, and i and and very rarely like i don't watch a lot of things but i watch you know a good amount of old movies and very few movies do you sometimes i think that could have been cast better like i look at a role and go well, i don't know if that was the right person with this show, every single person to like the extras, I was like, this is perfect casting. Like this Scottish guy out of nowhere, this Elvis character, this, this, you know, this all former military uh, prospect, Tig and the way Clay are, Juice, you don't really know much about it. He just looks crazy. And what is he doing? And it's just, and my two favorite characters, which we'll get into later, I mean, just Piney and the look on the faces of these guys. I'll get into that later. But the perfect casting. Shout out to Wendy O'Brien and everybody who put this show together. My goodness. I, the faces. It's all about the faces. When you have, not only is that completely correct, when you have... A John Linson, Kurt Sutter, Wendy O'Brien, all their team going, no, we want that. And, and they find it in a Tommy Flanagan. Oh, no, we want that. We're not sure, but they get it in a Theo Rossi. You, you, you get the Dre de Mateos. All of a sudden, we're recasting Ron and me. I, I tell you what, none of us were the same, but all of us were this incredible biker world. I mean, come on, Katie Seagal from what she had done previously, is probably not gonna get this part unless she was completely perfect for it mm -hmm. by us seeing her work, by having Kurt and John Langraff going, absolutely, Katie's gonna play the matriarch. She's gonna play the toughest broad on the show. And, and so Katie got to show her chops and we all got to show our chops. In certain times, some more than others during the, the filming of this, we were always like, uh, When's our next bone coming to really, you know, but, but we never complained and we all got along and, and I think the casting was brilliant and it, it certainly and shows. I, and there's something to be said for what you just said about the bone, you know, waiting for that like moment is you knew, it's almost like a, a pinch hitter. Like you knew, oh, wow, they just wrote that and, and I'm doing that. Okay, well, I'm, I'm bringing it. Like you got to bring it, right? Because you knew if you brought it, Kurt, the brilliance of Kurt that I loved what he did was the better you did, the more he wrote for you. Right. And, and he would kind of build upon things that you were doing. Um, because it was such a large cast, when you were getting your moments, they were so important. Now we do know, and we've talked about this in past episodes was that sometimes there were cut scenes. You would do a scene, you go, I know that's not making it, but there, but in this, in this beginning phase, we were all just like, okay, where do we fit in in this world that we're creating here? Who am I? Who is this guy? Let's see what's going on here. Who are these characters? So after, you know, and, and like you said, I, I still believe, and, and maybe it's me because I have kids and you have kids or whatever, the shit with the baby was heartbreaking. Like when, when they said 20% chance to live, I, 
when they said the stomach, the heart, it was so, and Matt, the way Jax reacted, Matt, his, his, his move to step away from it, not step into it. Totally away. And, and the way Tara, the way Maggie delivered a line about Abel should, and she stopped herself instead of saying, but he's going to die. Like, should, should he live? Like, she stopped herself mid-sentence of beautiful mm -hmm. writing between the Jax and the Tara characters of that little boy. and. No one, I mean, thinks he's going to survive. How, 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 how can he? But he did. And, and well, that, there's a scene later on that I'll get to with Gemma and Jax, which is just one of the greatest lines ever. And, and you know this as being a father. But so, so then I said, when we find, we meet Opie. We go to meet Opie. Opie looks hair. like he ate Opie. Yeah, it looks like short, he ate Opie short, too. Short hair. That was like double size lar Opie. Lar large large. Opie. Large double size. I mean, you want to talk about when we finally meet him. And I said this right. I wrote, wrote it down somewhere already. That chemistry again. Best. You, you you brought this up. That the chemistry we all had was so freaking good. Yeah. And 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 Ryan and Charlie. Best. Right out of the blocks. You knew without. And this is again the brilliance of Sutter. He doesn't. He, he, all his uh, information that we need to know as audience members, like little things, like. Oh, if you can't ride, you, you can't be in the club. Mm -hmm. People didn't know that, yeah. but it, but it, but it's not made a big deal of. And 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 you know right away that Opie and Jax they've been buddies for a long time. Without just to, they they've been buddies for a long time, and and that pull of family that Opie had with Donna, that scene with Donna and the two kids hanging, he's got to go, he's going to blow something up, and 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 that pull, the pull that the club had on him, had on all of us, some. It was easy for, mm -hmm. to stay in that club, but uh, wow, yeah. And, and here's what I love as, as now being in this game for a long time now and, and reading, you know, I'm, I was just reading this other script and it made me think, this is where I got to give it up to Kurt so much. And I know I do, we do this a lot, but I guess it's because we're revisiting, you know, his most iconic work here. He's so confident in his writing that he doesn't need to hit you over the head with the things of if your hands don't work, you don't ride. It's almost like, Hey, if you didn't hear that and you didn't get it, that's yeah. your fault. That, that's your fault. Like even with, and we know this, and this has always been the big joke. Who's Sam crew. What Sam crew What Sam yeah. sons of anarchy motorcycle club, Redwood original pay attention. Without the, without, without the W on the end. Yeah, right. exactly. Pay attention. Right. And the thing is, is they, people thought it was a person people that, and Kurt never decided, never fell to the pressure of, let me explain this for these dummies. It yeah. was, it was, let me, I'm going to write because I'm so confident in my writing that these little sub things that are in there, he would say like, the, like the stuff with the club, with the hands, like Opie and Jax's relationship that, you know, they've been friends since they were children without knowing you just kind of get that feeling right away. That is the sign of amazing writing because I read some stuff and I just read something the other day where I was like, man, why did it keep hitting you over the head with this? Point? I know, like, I know, I, got I know. It. I got it on page five. I don't need it on page 50. It's because some of these big shots, they don't trust the writing. They don't trust that the viewer is going to get it. So we want to hear it. We want to hear it. And it takes a, a, an incredible team like Sutter had and Langraff believed in, write it. People are going to get, they're going to rewatch it. If you miss something, go back. Because I'm telling you what, this show nonstop talk how could you not want to watch week in and week out with what happened what's about to happen how about that scene let's just jump around here yeah like you want to talk about not 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 but you had to you, you had to bring up some of the past because we're just meeting these characters for the first time we met tara for the first time in the hospital first time there she is we don't know much that they had history you, no that they had history much at all. and then all of a sudden three quarters of the way through this pilot Gemma lifts That's up her back lifts up the back of her green smock and there's a beautiful tattoo right just above her bum right in the and there's history there and she goes you're still the girl that you when you left we i i, I know what you're up to and and tara didn't know what to say and Gemma gave it to her and just going what the fuck is and as happening? the audience you go oh right she was a she was like a creator. Right. She, she was, was a, part of yes the yes and so you're going what and and yet there wasn't a lot of welcome back I know where you, no, none of that. The, the story just kept going and going and you either came along for the ride and were riveted, which millions and millions of people were. And this is why we're talking about it today. Yeah. Not and the it's beginning. Kind of Nobody was watching in the beginning. Ooh. Nobody. 
Well, fun oh. fact. Fun fact. Wow. The night the pilot aired. Sarah Palin. Sarah wasn't that, Palin. Wasn't uh, that right? Uh, yeah. They there said was a, she was running for vice president. But VP. It just got announced and all that. So it was. And this all is the news. You know, very different than today's, today's world where the news is in your retinas. This was still CNN's, MSNBC's, you know, Fox, yeah. it was everywhere. And it happened on the night we aired. So yeah. I think the ratings were like point zero, whatever. We had four and it was like, four people. yeah. <laughs> so that's why whenever I meet people and they're like, oh my God, sons, I love sons. And I go, did you watch it from the beginning? And very rarely, but when I do meet those true OGs, oh. and they're like, oh, I watched it from the day it aired. I'm like, oh, wow. that's amazing. I agree. So, so one thing I have written here, and I have to go into it because we touched on it. And I just, I got to give this guy all the props for a minute. William Lucking. Piney is a beast of an actor. He's not only not only was he voted the strongest man on Sons of Anarchy, because he would kill you. He would sit on you. You could punch him and punch. He would just keep coming. He would just keep coming and, right and through a wall. Right through a wall. To have William Lucking, who's been on all those westerns, and he's like 104 years old. He looks fabulous for his age. He. That whole nose thing, the oxygen thing, him and Sutter talked about it. That old denim cut, which were the things to do in the 50s. That original six or nine, I always forget. Is it original six or uh, original nine? Do you remember? Original nine. I think it's nine. Anyway, the, he was part of that whole group. And for him, smelling the cigarette, adding these little things that you did so well in your seven-year run with this guy. Not like As that. I got to... But that was freaking mental. So cool. It's un. But then on top of it, it's that cheeks. generation of piney. It's those strawberry cheeks. It's that. It's that gravitas. It's that weight that you're like, oh my god, this. I could feel him through the screen. Like he's business. <sighs> and when you're watching it, you're like, whatever he says, I'm gonna listen to. And again, in person, he's a giant. He's just, he's as big and as, and like up front as he and is. He, and, he drove, and, he, and he drove a mini. He, he, he drove he, a mini. In real life. William Lutt, a mini he looked like a transformer when he, he came took the, in. <laughs> he, took the, he took the seat. He had his beautiful wife. They took the seat, shoved it, took the back seat right out. To the back. He, he would crawl in with those big legs and he yeah. would drive that little mini. Bad knees, big legs. It looked like Didn't a backpack get. on him. He could have yeah. wore it as a backpack. To yeah, he did. I couldn't, it's so funny, you just remind you, and his, and his wife did, they had like all this beautiful art collection, like really oh. polar opposite of Piney, but I just can't, I was, I'm so obsessed with that character and I really can't wait to dive into that more because I, I really don't think that he gets the credit because he's not on really any of the posters, he's not on any of the like, the toys, the fan stuff, the this, and I'm just like, this guy's my favorite character, bar none. I've always said Tig was, but right now, Piney's giving him a run. So, so then let me, let me get to this because th you need to discuss this. Because I want to know when it was filmed. You and Happy fighting. Well, right. okay, here we go. Um, boy, oh boy. I mean, I would just remember getting in the trailer that first day, as I mentioned, me and Bobby were riding, no lines, Ron. I had long sleeves because we hadn't even picked my tattoos out yet. And so the next day, remember 16 days, the next day Sutter comes in and we pick out, yeah, that one's good. I go, how about, yeah, fine little, I, you know, former Marine got that done. That's why Clay and I were tight. He's older than me, but I was like his little brother in a, in a way and, and really good with guns. So I wanted to be, you know, excellent. Um, we figured that all out. On day three or day four, we started on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. It was on that Friday, that first late, late, late shoot night. We had a couple late nights. And I, I never forget hearing about DL, hearing about Happy, mm -hmm. hearing about his past, hearing about him as a guy, as a person, as a dog lover. But the guy took his shirt off and I'm like going, wait, I'm gonna box this guy? Like, wait, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna knuckle it up with this guy? And I am like, you know me, I'm like you. I'm older than you, but I'm like you. I, I, Charlie gave me every, Every biker book known to mankind, all the clubs. I was, I was reading every day, every night, trying to soak it all up, trying to, the bike life, the one percenter life. And DL was the real thing. 
And so I'm going, wait a minute. I'm going to, and DL, that dog was like this all the time. That dog. I'll never forget when we were going to go rehearse the fighting scene. DL goes to me, you're like, like, you're the real fucking deal, man. You're the real fucking, like, you're an actor. You're... I went, DL, don't punch me in the face. <laughs> Just, this, this is called fake fighting. I've done a hundred movies. He goes, oh, I know, I know. Uh, but it's just the way he was breathing and he had no shirt on, the cut, 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 cut. And I'm just trying to figure out my tattoos and who the, I'm just going, don't, don't hit me in the face. No, 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 no. And we, we, you saw the fight. We saw the fight. No, I it, wasn't. He, oh yeah, I was there. Okay. You were there. You were along yeah. the, you were yeah. along the ring watching. Right. And he never got close to hitting me in the face. And I was just so, that hug that we gave each other, that was real, man. That's as real as it gets. Like, whoa. I survived my first fight with DL. Well, what was so cool is what I learned from that, because I don't know if we did it much more and maybe that was meant to be done throughout the future is you guys had like this disagreement at the table at church. And then the disagreement went to the ring. It's like, oh, what do you got a problem with each other? Okay, you have a problem with each other. Go fight it out. And again, this happens in the one percenter world. Yeah. But we didn't, we didn't broadcast it. Sutter mm -hmm. didn't broadcast it. Just, it just puts your money in the table. And, and then when, when Clay goes, okay, stop it. We've seen enough. You know. And then they hug it out. Because that's what you do. That's what you do in real life in these biker clubs, man. They, that, that, that's what goes on. You got a and disagreement. You knuckle up. And then right there at that ring is when the Clay and Jack thing sets the stage. Because he goes, what if we don't yeah, get into yeah. the guns? What if we don't yeah. rebuild? Yeah. He's yeah. like, what are you talking about? We sell guns. And he goes, yeah, we'll talk about it another time. And it was like, yeah. there it is. Yeah. There it is. Yeah. There's, there's, the, there's the two Rams hitting each other right there. There's one little click thing and, and Clay doing his the, thing. The two Rams. That's a really good analogy. That's a really good visual. Because they, they did. They did that, man. They a did lot. a lot. And that was the first one I noticed where I went, oh. There it is. And it's going to continue. Little did they know that that one line on the side of that apron of that ring is going to be forever. So another thing I noticed, just weird because I'm crazy with continuity and all that. Jax's hair, and this is how you can tell which is the old one and which is the new one. His hair is shorter in some scenes and his hair is longer in some scenes. Very little. Look at you. Good observation. I'm looking at this pretty face in the pilot and I'm yeah. going, okay, wait. So in that scene, I'm trying to grow my hair like a, like a, like a, a tree root, like a yeah. moss, like, let's go, let's go. Yeah. Then there was nothing. Then there was a little bit more, the, the continuity, they must've had such a, a hard time with me. Such Just, a hard time. I couldn't, I couldn't wait. And do you know, my first line that Tig ever spoke, uh, that you see my face saying it, was when I walked into the clubhouse and, and half sack prospect and a couple of other hang arounders were, were dealing with this deer. And I come in, I go disappear. Yeah. Beat it. Disappear. And I thought about that last night and I thought disappear. Like what a, what a, what a foreshadowing for this character in a small way yeah. with his dolls phobia with after the, the, the Donna fiasco of, of wanting to disappear of, of his pain within himself. And yet he was very forefront. Tig was a very yeah, forefront guy. Ever. ever. Ever disappear. And I thought that was so not intended, but for me now, 28,000 years later, and you and I get to talk about it. It's just a fantastic thing to think about because we were all so young. You, you were a baby. Charlie yeah. looks like he's 14. Yeah. So that's, that's interesting about the hair. And Booney's hair doesn't have a gray hair in his head. I mean, no. On, no, Seven I years. mean, and again, again, when you think about it, it is a long time ago in the grand scheme of things, but not that long ago. In the no. grand, I mean, it's 12 years ago. So yes, that's a long time. Cause I always think about someone aging 12 years, you know, uh, 12 to 24, I'm a very different person. Right. So, but just again, I noticed those little things because what a, what a mission that must have been for those editors because they're using pieces from the original and, and if they're like, man, but I really like that scene. Oh, don't worry, nobody will notice. So that, that's one thing. 
So here's the line I was talking about earlier that I wanted to get to. Yeah. You are the only one this boy's got when he says that he's going to, his son's going to die. He's not going to make it. He's going to die. He's going to die, mom. slaps him. Hard. Slapped a taste out of his mouth. Hard. Hard. (laughs) And tell your beautiful listeners out there, these are real slaps, people. Those are real slaps. No, no. we, We would go over, I would. Make sure when you slap me, don't hit my eyes right don't there. Slap me. Cup it, but you got to hit me. Me and Kenny Johnson, I don't know how many times we went at I mean, honestly, but yes, you're right. She slaps Jack hard. Charlie took it, and I think that slapped some sense into him. He still wouldn't go see his boy yet. What an incredible line, bud. You're the, if, you, if you don't think he's going to live, no one is. You're yeah. the only one that he's got. And I went, ooh, I feel that having two sons. Like, that's it, yeah. right? Yeah, the one. yeah. Yeah. You're the protector. Um, I forget who says it. I have it written here. Oh, I do know who says it. So we start to see the conspiring of Gemma and Clay. They get into that bedroom. She oh, covers I've got, that I, bird. I, if I may, if I Please. may, if I may. Okay, so I know that Sutter might be tired of it with all the accolades and brilliance of this show. I know that we had to talk about it, but that's the very first, for those of you who know Shakespeare, that is the beginning of the Gertrude Claudius analogy of the Hamlet to the Sons of Anarchy, Jack's being Hamlet. Of course, there's no realism really, but as a theme, Mm -hmm. that was the beginning stages. And you as an audience, if you didn't feel what? All you've gotten to this point is Jax finds a journal. John Teller. There's all these photos of a young Katie and John Teller and it's his dad. And wait a minute, Clay's the new dad, but they got married after John died. We don't even know how he died. Katie tells Jax a little bit of, you know, got, got, got hit and on the road and, and he, but he didn't die. He was as tough as you are. And, and then you see when Jax is out of the room, those two, the parrot sitting back, Clay, arms up like this, and Gemma starts talking about it subtly, about what we have to watch for in this boy. Mm-hmm. And that, and then of course she slides down his body. It's still one She says like, a line. She says a line in there, which I love. She says, remorse is a dangerous thing. Yeah. And and that's where I'm like, oh. She and and now we'll talk about this in a hundred years from now when we get to season seven. But there is a line further down the road where I say she's the gatekeeper, she's the controller of everything. And I thought she is, yeah, man. You did from say day that. one, she's been the one manipulating everything. She's, she's been the puppet the maker, puppeteer. She's, she's the puppeteer, not Clay, no doubt. not anybody else. She's been the one. <laughs> who controls the way things go, what people feel, what they do from the beginning. And yes, that's that Hamlet thing, but it's like, she truly is. And again, and, and, and we'll, this will come up multiple times. We've already talked about it in our episodes before with Stahl and for other ones. There is a lot of female villains on this show in one way or another, this female villainy throughout, like who's, you know, who's doing the bad thing. Where, yes, there's a lot of guys that do bad things, but there's a lot of female women do a lot of bad things on this show, and Gemma being the, the, the queen of it all. You, 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 you cannot help but be on the Gemma team, but then it gives you pause. It gives you real pause. In, in, in the first uh, episode, the one we're talking about right now, the pilot, do you know, did you remember? I kind of remember this because the Tig and, and, and Jack's thing was kind of like that for seven seasons in a way. Um, he couldn't pull the trigger. He couldn't pull the trigger. He couldn't, he couldn't pull the trigger. He could, Jax couldn't, that whole a- a- end of the pilot near the end where the, the Mayans, yeah. that, that whole, the, the, the redo. Yeah. And there's that guy who gets caught up in a wrong place at the wrong time and, and Clay goes, do it. Yeah. And, and he didn't have to because someone else finishes him off first. But honestly, I, I, uh, I found that interesting how there's always like Jax, was so innocent 
in a in a in a weird sort of way in that those early years. Gemma, you, you made sure that you were on that Gemma team. You weren't on the Wendy team. You're on master the Gemma team. Master manipulator. She's a master master, master ma manipulator. Master. And and uh, okay, so then the explosion night. Yeah. That was something else because I felt like the majority of the time we were filming was in that place. Wasn't it twenty three hours? 20 hours 18 it was before hours. it was before there before was that <laughs> before yeah we we, we it we, was before we some, they were like you can't keep people this long <laughs> we got some golden time during that night we, we got just kept golden filming. and silver time just kept going the camera There's kept going famous pictures of us all sleeping on the chairs i mean we were out <laughs> like and we just you know we had to blow it up so when i talked earlier in this you know what we're doing right now i said that there were some cobwebs or spider webs as they call from the previous pilot one of them is when we are running out if you watch the pilot now yeah. we're running out that the is Catalan. actually the original pilot that is, it is isn't it yeah, yeah that is because i wasn't Glenn's in that. and you're not yeah. in that no that is not from the new one so you'll no. actually that's that's not juice that's whatever my character's name was like jd or j but whatever it's but you had different. your toucan <clears throat> you had your black and my you, toucan you had you had your hat on so For people who don't live in canada that's a woolly or, it's a woolly. Uh, you had your woolly on. Yeah. Took in Canada. Yeah. Took in Canada. So that that scene is actually from the original pilot with, you know, so different time, different era. But I remember being there for a long time. That was such a large scene because there was a lot going on. Large. We moving the dynamite. We were, you know, yeah. moving around. We were yeah. checking the guns. Um, you just talked about Gemma and where we realized Gemma is all about her family. That's why people loved her. What would Gemma do? We've seen the t-shirts. You know, everybody loves Gemma. And you can't fault her for that. But the scene with her and Wendy, when she comes in to that hospital and puts the hand on her throat and obviously finishes off with giving her the drugs. Come on. It was magnetic. It was, it was, uh, it's stunning writing. It's, it's a, it's a treat to see two women characters who continue on the series for, for a few years. Wendy took some years off, came back. That, that again, is a reminder. If you think you know what's happening in this show, you, you actually don't. You, you really don't. For Sutter to have that, would you like some tea? Do you, do you want a coffee? Do you feel okay? And then that hand goes around the throat and there's no fucking around. No. This is the way it is. You're out. You're done. Or I'll kill you. Like you lost so... that privilege. She goes, I oh. just want, I'm just, I could live for my son now. She goes, you're not yeah. his mother. Yeah, no, the way you said it is the way <laughs> oh, she did it. Thank God. I was like, you're not that's his it. mother. That's you it. Right? You're not his you're mother. Out. You have nothing to do with anything anymore. And it was like, you're out. And, and, and imagine not only, that's and not the only... first episode. First episode. And not only are you out, I'm going to walk away from you now because I've had it with you. Pray to Jesus. You're done. It's just, I love that. No overkill. It was just simple and Just beautiful. simple, whatever. And, I, and again, I do see, I, maybe it is because I'm such a giant Godfather fan. There's so many similarities with the Godfather, which I'm sure a lot of people do, but there is a lot of like that Michael coldness when he slams the door on Kay and and again, not if you haven't seen Godfather, none of this will make sense to you. But there is that like that rise of power of no, 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 no. My family is the most important thing. And you're an outsider, just like Tara was an outsider and Wendy's an outsider. And it's about Jax and Clay. And even Jax is kind of on the outside of whatever this mission is that Gemma has. And I wish that and maybe when we get into it and go further, we'll kind of see what was that motivation of Gemma all this time? At this present moment, it's to protect that Teller name, to protect that Sons of Anarchy name. And, uh, and then we go, into, we go into the montage. One of the cool things for me, which I thought was just, oh, no, no, no. When we go into the montage, I want to get to this quick. No, go ahead, take your time. Bobby Elvis. So yeah. short-lived. So short-lived. I, 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 I have a question for you. Was that his voice? I, okay, I asked myself the same thing. Booney's um, one of my best pals in the world, as he is yours. I don't think and so. I got I don't think it was. And I got to tell you. But he is a singer. That, oh, he's a fucking great singer. And right. we've, we've heard him sing. We did an Australian tour, and he'd play guitar and sing every, every night. 
and he was amazing. But I think with the lack of time or the way that it was going to be edited and, and portrayed, which I just loved it. I loved that ending. I love the Elvis oh. song. They just found it needed something, I guess. But um, Booney was with the mic and, and, and then that, we saw him maybe one other time as Elvis in the entire yeah, show. Maybe, maybe one other time in the costume, like we just didn't see it. And I thought this was this really cool, he needed the money, you know, and Clay references that like his ex-wives need the money. And like, there's, there, there is a building towards an arc there. Like they're putting yeah. something in. How did yeah. he become a singer? How did he become a stage act? How did, there is an, a building of an arc that I felt like potentially was just kind of yeah. sidestepped for whatever reasons, but what that also led in, and this was such a cool moment for me. And again, props to whoever creates this props to whoever like comes up with this. You got Jackson, that mirror questioning everything, found the journal. Who is he? Who am I? What's this journal mean? Where's my dad? Who's my real dad? Who's clay We're questioning his whole life. And we reveal and pull back that tattoo on the back. With the powder gunshot stuff, with the with that that back, uh, you know, Velcro Velcro vest the, the, that saved him from being shot, with the powder holes on the back. There's the tat. I mean, him and him and Opie had action to put that figure cool action yeah. figure cool. Like when action you see that, figure. you go, "This dude's a superhero." Like, yeah, pulls back, That's got right. those plug things, and this giant yeah. tattoo that matches the cut that he's wearing, and you go. Oh, we're in this. We're gonna watch yeah. this for a long time. Like I'm getting in. Yeah, on I, I couldn't. Show. I couldn't agree. I couldn't agree more. I, I just thought it was brilliant. I can't believe it was so long, like fifty six minutes. Very long. I was like, exhausted. and so did we go? Did we go over with our advertising with FX? We must have gone I, over. I think they give grace to pilots. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna Maybe. make an assumption here. And again, I'm sure if somebody will fact check and go, you have no idea what you're talking about. I know for us as a Sons of Anarchy show, we went over all the time. We were doing yeah. like hour and a half episodes, but there was definitely some grace given on the first show. So I'm assuming yeah. with all the advertisements, because this is back in the day where they were weekly shows, there was 900 like Dodge Ram and Miller Lite commercials, but maybe <laughs> not, but maybe not because it was the first show and there was nobody watching it. So maybe there wasn't, maybe they needed to get the advertisers, but um. I, and, and again, and again, how, how they filtered, how Sutter and his team filtered in so much in that 56 minutes. And I mentioned this earlier about how Opie and Donna, the struggle that, that we're going to about that we're going to see without saying a lot, just that struggle of the club and the pull and the friendships. And then, the, you know what, there was some violence in that first episode, but not a lot. No. Like there was a precursor of stuff to come which is going to get really really sad and violent coming up that show was but but again, and, and again i love how we're here on the pilot to start this weekly stuff off but before we go what i think is so great is that when we see the what people have to understand is the characters get developed and sometimes there's things left over from the beginnings of them so we saw there was the scene with donna like how concerned she was about opie and the fight yeah. and then the kids see it and and, yeah. and you realize that Opie's connection with his children, there's yeah, there's the Leroy thing with Clay, and you realize yeah. that the sons actually answer to someone kind of, even though they're selling, they're not the all powerful. There are no. other people that are violent. And we start to see the building of things as we go and as these characters. So some things are kind of left over from these original, these original episodes in the first season that we'll start to see, you know, some for seven years. Um, I just thought, you know, and again, I, it's so weird talking about when you're one of them on it. Um, I try to remove myself from things. I don't usually watch a lot of things that I'm in. This is a little easier because I didn't do a lot the first three seasons. That is everything I want in a TV show. Like when I watch that episode, I go, yeah, okay, I understand. We're hooked. I'm hooked. I've and never seen a world like it. Never. A world of the 1% is like that. I've never seen a world like this. No, I still no, one, no, one, no, no one had. If you think about this, Theo, when this pilot that we just talked about, there was us, there was... Breaking Bad, there was Game of Thrones, there was The Walking Dead. Think about those four, four right? M Mad Men. Well, Sopranos was almost was over, over by yeah. then. Was over. But, but my, my point is we were all at the same time, all itching up and getting successful for 
different radical worlds that if you get good writing, good character driven stuff, not afraid to say it and shoot it and edit it and the music in this show, which is not overdone, but it just rips your heart out at the end of every episode. Bob, what he did was just still yeah. kind of amazing. Uh, you, you just cannot, and as we've talked about, you can't wait to the next week. This is not get to watch 13 in one day, people. This is every Tuesday you get to watch an episode. So people would talk, talk, phone, talk. Couldn't wait. They couldn't wait for that show on Tuesday night. And it just got bigger and bigger and bigger. Yeah, and I think that, and again, what, 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 what I judge things by, what, I, what, what gets me in, because you know, your time is so valuable in life, is I'm going into another world that I would never enter any other time, right? So if someone made a, a, a weekly show about a family that goes to a supermarket every week, I don't care. I have to go to the supermarket. It's part of my life. Like we all go food shop and we all do whatever. This, I was able to escape into the lives of, of MC, of motorcycle club world, uh, something that I will never do. And when you look at these great shows that you just named, the Breaking Bads yeah. and, and the yeah. Sopranos and the yeah. Shield yeah. and the Wire and, and, and Oz and all these great shows, it's because I'm going to go in Oz, I'm going to go live what it's like in prison. In the Shield, I'm going to go see what it's like in this police precinct, this corrupt police precinct. In the Sopranos with these Italian mob family in New Jersey. And you're going to a different place. I think that is so incredible to not just do it, but to do it well. And why I've never seen anything like that since is there's very few things that you enter into a different world that you might see. You might be in your car tomorrow and see a guy drive by on a motorcycle and go, if you're a Sons of Anarchy fan, first thing you think of is go, is that guy in a club or something? Like what's going on? Like how Jaws changed the water, this changes how people like look at bikers. They go, oh, I wonder if he like knows Jackson. Well, that's, no, that's the truth. And, and, and people buying motorcycles for those oh. 10, that, that 10 year span, people getting out on the road and, and, and it's, uh, it's, it was a whole new, a whole new world of, of people watching that show and riding bikes and talking about it. 